Hey guys, this is Sarah and welcome back to my channel. So today I wanted to talk to you about my most recent read, which was The Trouble with Goats and Sheep by Joanna Cannon. And this novel takes place in rural England on a specific avenue in a small town. And so this novel has a really interesting structure. It chooses to name the chapters not after you know, your typical chapter one, chapter two. Instead, it chooses to refer to the avenue and then to the house number. One of the characters in the novel is this little girl named Grace, and instead of having like the Grace chapter, it is avenue A, house four. I believe her, her house number is four. I could be completely wrong. But I found that really interesting because it kind of gives you a good feel about how the community members thought of their community in a sense like anything that happened to a certain family would be like oh that's the house 12's problem and so what does this novel talk about the novel follows the whole avenue as they try to deal with a missing persons case one of their community members mrs. Creasy has gone missing at the start of the novel and the fact that she has gone missing is further complicated by this gossip that they have surrounding one of their community members who lives in House 11. And the novel follows multiple different perspectives. At first, I thought we would be staying primarily with our character Grace, who is a little girl of, I believe, like age 7 or 8, something in elementary school, and her friend Tilly. However, it branches off into basically all the different house perspectives, so you get a feel for each community member's kind of mindset and, you know, secrets as well. You kind of act as the secret collector of the town, essentially. So. I really liked this novel. I thought that it had a lot going for it because like The Summer That Melted Everything, this novel takes place on a really hot summer where the secrets that all these community members were trying to keep to themselves are brought to light because of Mrs. Creasy's disappearance. And it also had a really good way, like The Summer That Melted Everything, of talking about how when there is a lot of gossip in any given town or in any given group, even if it's just two friends, it can cause a lot of damage and that gossip can take a life and a myth of its own. It can get compiled upon and changed and so on and so forth. I did not end up liking this as much as a summer that melted everything primarily because I felt like the multiple narratives made it so that I didn't get to attach with any specific character. I understand that the novel was supposed to show us how all these characters are inherently flawed, especially in the fact that they like to hold secrets from one another and a lot of them are extremely judgmental. I can see as well how the no novelist Joanna Cannon was trying to call out insular thinking and an insular community and how being too insular and not coming together and it being accepting of those that are outside of one group's groups can be dangerous. I got that, but at the same time, I didn't feel any deep connection. The only character that the reader is able to connect a little bit more on a one-on-one -on -one basis would be Grace and Tilly because you spend the most time with them. The Dorothy's character, you spend quite a bit of time with her, but she is purposefully written in a way that you kind of doubt her and thus I think that prevents some type of attachment. And all the characters have these kind of little fatal flaws that makes one doubt them and thus not connect. And I suppose Grace as well could have those, but she's a child narrator and thus as a child immediately a reader, at least a reader like myself, doesn't question the child's perspective. 
as as much. This novel strength is in its writing style. I did really enjoy that. I'm going to read to you a few passages to give you a feel for what the writing is like. And I, I'm not sure how many novels Joanna Cannon has written, but I can see her developing more as a writer and kind of honing her topics a little bit better. So I'm eager to read more of her works. I wouldn't discount this. I did give it four out of five stars. I'm not saying like I gave it like a two or a one, not at all. But I think for me, it had a lot to live up to with The Summer That Melted Everything being a definite five star and one of my favorite books of this year. And having that also take place on a very hot, hot summer with a child protagonist that is trying to navigate situation. So I don't think I have much more to say. I probably will think of things I forgot to say later, but what can you do? That's the nature of these. I like to think of these reviews as more of a conversation. So feel free to talk to me in the comments. Tell me if you've read this, if you want to read it, all that jazz. <laughs> so let's get to the, to the meat of the matter. I don't even think that's a phrase, but I made it. We walked outside into buttery sunshine. It had spread itself over the graves, bleaching the stones and picking out the names of the dead. I watched it creep up the walls of the church until it reached the stained glass windows, where it threw splinters of scarlet and purple into a cloudless sky. Mrs. Morton had been absorbed by a clutch of efficient women in hats, and so I wandered around the, court, the churchyard in careful horizontal lines in case anyone were to be accidentally stepped upon. I liked the feeling of the ground beneath my shoes. It seemed safe and experienced, as though all the bones that were buried there had made wisdom grow into the soil. I walked past Ernest's and Maud's and Maybell's, now beloved and remembered only by the dandelions which grew across their names, until a neat gravel path brought me to the channels. The graves here were so old, Flecken had eaten into who they used to be, and rows of forgotten people stared back at me from headstones that stooped and stumbled like drunks in the earth. Quote two. How do you find God? I said. Where is he? He's everywhere, everywhere. The vicar waved his arms around to show me. You just have to look. And if we find God, everyone will be safe? I said, of course. Even Mrs. Creasy? Naturally. A crow unfolded itself from the roof of the church and a murderous cry filled the silence. I don't know how God can do that, I said, how he can keep us from disappearing. You know that the Lord is our shepherd, Grace. We are just sheep. If we wander off the path, we need God to find us and bring us home. I looked down at my feet whilst I thought about this. Grass had buried itself into the weave of my socks and dug sharp red lines into my flesh. Why do people have to die, I said. But when I looked up, the vicar was back at the child's door. Are you coming for tea at the churchyard, he shouted. I didn't really want to. I would rather have gone back to Tilly. Her mother didn't believe in organized religion and was worried we'd all be brainwashed by the vicar, but I had to say yes, or it would have been a bit like turning down Jesus. The roads on our estate were all named after trees, and Tilly and I walked from the tall churchyard along an alley which separated Sycamore from Cider. On either side of us, lines of washing stretched like bunting across deserted gardens, waiting for the whisper of breeze and, as we walked, drips of water smacked a tune onto the concrete paths. No one realized then that, in many years to come, people would speak, still speak of the summer, that every other heat wave would be compared to this one, and those who lived through it would shake their heads and smile whenever anyone complained of the temperature. It was a summer of deliverance, a summer of space hoppers and dancing queens, when Dolly Parton begged Jolene not to take her man, and we all stared at the surface of Mars and felt small. We had to share bath water and fill the kettle, and we were only allowed to flush the toilet after what Mrs. Morton described as a special occasion. 
The problem was, it meant that everyone knew when you'd had a special occasion, which was a bit awkward. Mrs. Morton said we'd end up with puckets and sandpipes if we, did, if we weren't careful, and she was part of the vigilante group who reported anyone for watering their gardens in the dark. Mrs. Morton used wash water, which was allowed. So that was the quotes that I had to share with you. And I am going to say bye now, but I do really hope that you are all well and that you have a wonderful rest of the week. Bye.